Hi all, Nathan Wells here, and welcome to Bricks in Motion Tutorials. In this series, we'll be going through the process of making LEGO animations and talking about different animation concepts that you'll need to know. Today we're talking about brick filming, what it is exactly, and how to get started if you want to make brick films yourself. Brick filming is just another word for animating with construction toys like LEGO. It doesn't have to be LEGO, and it doesn't have to be stop motion, but it often is. For most of these tutorials, we will be focusing on stop motion animation with LEGO, but don't let that limit you. Many brick filmers like to mix animation techniques and mediums. Before you can shoot your first animation, you'll need to prepare. First, you need to find a proper space to work. This is probably going to be your bedroom. This is totally fine. You don't want a place where other people can disturb you or your set while you're animating. A room with a stable, non-flexing floor is ideal, such as concrete. However, unless you are working in a dedicated studio or garage like me, this probably isn't an option. Your next best bet is vinyl flooring or hardwood. Try to avoid carpet or other flexible surfaces if at all possible. If animating on carpet is unavoidable, try to keep your camera directly on top of your animation surface instead of using a tripod. Carpeted floors are problematic because in stop motion animation, even the tiniest shift in a set or camera position is noticeable in the final product. Carpeted floors provide the least stable surface for tripods and tables. If you must animate in a carpeted room with a tripod, at least avoid standing near the tripod legs while animating. Also, if you have sandbags, you can use those to weigh down the tripod. You'll need a surface to animate on, such as a table or desk. It should be sturdy and solid, and near a computer or laptop so that you can hook up your camera to your capture software easily. Consider the height of the table and if you're going to be sitting or standing while animating. If the table is too high, you'll hurt your arms and your shoulders while animating. Too low and you'll hurt your back. Whether you sit or stand is a personal preference, but I find that if you wear comfortable shoes, standing is preferable because then you can more easily reach distant parts of your set. A quick aside about adjustable height tables. I use one and I really like it, but it does have its pros and cons. The biggest upside, of course, is that they are adjustable. You can move them to any height that you need. There are many options available online. However, they are still more expensive than non-adjustable tables. Now that you have your table set up, it's time to start attaching your sets to it. In this case, we'll be attaching a simple base plate, so we'll need some tape. Unfortunately, not all tape is created equal. You want tape that has a relatively strong adhesive, doesn't leave residue when removed, and works well with heat. For beginners on a budget, the best tape to use is painter's tape. It's relatively cheap, leaves no residue unlike duct tape or masking tape, and it works well with heat unlike scotch tape. It's available in all hardware stores and most craft stores. For more experienced animators who can afford it, gaffer's tape is recommended. It has a strong adhesive, leaves no residue, works great with heat, and can retain some of its stickiness after repeated uses. However, it is only available in specialty stores and is considerably more expensive, but it's well worth it if you can afford it. If you don't want to use tape at all, an alternative is sticky tack. Brick filmers like to use these to hold pieces to other pieces, such as minifigures. To secure a base plate, you can take evenly sized globs of sticky tack, stick them to the bottom of the base plate, and then stick the base plate to the table. Personally, I avoid this because it can create uneven spacing on the bottom of the base plate and the set can rock back and forth. That said, I often do use sticky tack as a sort of tape, like this. Next, you need to set up your camera. There are now more consumer grade cameras available than ever before, such as camera phones, webcams, and DSLRs. In a future video, we'll be going over the pros and cons of each of these kinds of cameras. For webcams, Many brick filmers like to build little Lego cages around the webcam to attach it directly to the table or base plate they're animating on. For DSLRs, a tripod or camera arm is required. For phones, some people like to build Lego cages, but there are also plenty of tripods that can hold phones as well. Now it's time to start building sets for your film, something that I in particular enjoy very much. We'll go into more detail in a future video, but for now, keep three things in mind. First only build what the camera sees. Second, keep the size of your camera in mind. And third, make sure that you have enough room for your set that your hands can get in easily. In addition to your sets, you need your characters. 
These will probably be little minifigures, but they could also be action figures, or even figures built from smaller pieces. The more points of articulation a character has, the greater the flexibility you will have in animating them, but they will also be more challenging to animate. A basic LEGO minifigure only has 7 points of articulation, whereas this action figure has many more. And this kid's toy only has 1 point of articulation. Finally, you need lights to light up your sets and characters. Most brick drummers use desk lamps like these. They're cheap, easy to set up on a desk, and their articulation allows them to be moved into many positions. There are many other types of lights available, including LED panels, big studio lights, and tiny LED lights that you can build into your set. Be sure to turn off any overhead lights so that the only lights on in your studio are your animation lights. Also, because the sun is constantly changing position in the sky, keep your curtains closed. We'll go into more detail about lights in a future video, but for now there's one more thing to keep in mind. Most lights you use are going to need to be diffused in some way. This helps spread out and lessen the harsh directionality of the light. You can purchase purpose-made diffusers, or you can tape paper to the lamp, preferably parchment paper. However, be sure to turn off your lights if you have to leave the room, as lamps can get hot over extended periods of time and become a fire hazard. The last thing you want to do is to start a fire. Now that you have your desk, sets, characters, camera, and lights, your studio is all set up. Next time, I'll be looking at animating with different frame rates, and how to find the frame rate that works best for your style of brick filming. I hope you'll stick around for more Bricks in Motion tutorials. Stay tuned.